Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus, and I got a big update for you, not only for the Arctic blast that's coming, there's temperatures going all the way towards Mexico, but Mexico just literally had their strongest storm, strongest hurricane in history to hit the Pacific coast of Mexico, and it was devastating, guys, and it wasn't even supposed to happen. I'm going to give you all the latest information, plus what could be forming in the coming days and what's going on with your cold blast in the coming days as well. Never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. It is free to do. Remember, hit that bell. It is very important. I always put links and timestamps in the description below to help you get through the video faster or to go back and see what information you want to see. I have a lot of helpful information for Mexico. If you know someone in Mexico or if you're from Mexico, share this information to others over there. I have links and phone numbers that you can contact to get assistance and help. Now you can see in this animation how Major Hurricane Otis had did rapid intensification, guys. Not within 24 hours, within 12 hours. It went from a tropical storm to a Cat 5. Now this went right by Acapulco and they were right on the north and east side of this system. All the winds went through the city. Now, one of the culprits is the temperatures. You can see here by the year that we just got off the hottest three-month period on record. And you can see here, all the way from 1940 all the way to 2023, we've been warming up and warming up, and we've had our hottest ever. Plus, link in the description on all this information, guys. Now, everything keeps getting warmer and warmer. Scientists are concerned that rapid intensification hurricanes like Otis will become more frequent, guys. And all the model guidance failed, guys. All of it showed a tropical storm at best. They had no warning of this intensification. And the damage everywhere has been devastating. This is a residential building in Acapulco, guys. Before and after. This was a brand new $130 million luxury high-rise in Acapulco. Before and after. This is your view from the airport. Acapulco International Airport is closed right now because of all the damage. And you can see here the destruction that has caused. And you can see the big area of people. This could have been a lot worse. This is how it was in a hospital in Acapulco while the hurricane was doing landfall. And now that power's been restored and the internet's been back on, now you can see a lot of the damage that people is reporting, guys. Here's a view inside one of those high rises. You can see the destruction, guys. It's just sad. Everywhere you look on the internet, getting updates, it's very sad. This is the Princess Hotel in Acapulco. The, this is a hotel, guys. Look at this. Got a car in the lobby. Everything's just done. Everything's done. So I have this updated information that's for anyone that's in Mexico. This is not only the U.S. Embassy. This is a consulate in Mexico. This is a message for all the citizens in Mexico. You need any help. You need shelters. You need any kind of assistance. Go to the link in the description. This link is in there. Call these people. This is how you can get some help. And to get myself out of the way, you can see there is phone numbers that you can call from Mexico. But there's also links that will help you. There's also links that will help you with shelters as well. Make sure you go to this link in the description. Because there's a lot of help in your area to get shelters to get you and your family to a safe place. Please go to the description. And the latest update in the tropics is they actually given this up to a 70% chance now expected to redevelop into a tropical storm later today or Saturday. So I will keep you updated. Remember the trend is this was going to surface down towards this piece of energy and get together. And this one is up to 30% still. And to show you what is coming still in the tropics, you can see right here from the Ural, chance for just a tropical depression. Of course, you got stronger than a tropical depression. But this is what's in the Eastern Pacific. Plus we have what's forming in the Caribbean and you can see in four to five days it is going towards Central America while this starts going towards Jamaica and Bahamas. Now once you go six and seven days this storm comes back out getting pushed out by the cold front and starts going into the eastern Pacific after that while this one also turns by the Bahamas and goes into the land guys. Now you can see the latest update here with the year on this is U.S. Central time up here. You have what's in the eastern Pacific that goes towards Central America while you get this cool front coming through. Then we have that disturbance moving through the Bahamas. 
very weak according to the Ural, and goes out through the east of the Atlantic. Also, what goes through Central America comes back out. Euro is showing that weak as well, while this cold front persists to push all the way down, all the way towards Central America with this cold air. Plus, you can see the latest update on potential velocity anomaly according to the Ural. Big update as all this favorable environment as we go through the beginning of November is very weak, guys, as that storm system goes out through the Bahamas out through the Atlantic is going to happen again. We're going to see this pattern again as we go through the middle of November around the 15th through the 20th, mostly by the Eastern Caribbean and curving out to the Atlantic again. So the Caribbean needs to watch out for that date as you finish up with hurricane season. But at the same time, at the end of hurricane season, we could get another anomaly coming through the Eastern Pacific as we go through the beginning of December. So I will keep you updated on that as well. Things do change, but that is the latest information. Plus the cold blast coming. You can see all the freeze warnings over here on the West Coast. Also for the Central Plains, this is coming all the way down towards the South. Now yesterday we did have a lot of severe weather. We had four tornado reports. Matter of fact, a real nasty one that's all over X, all over what Twitter used to be. Real nasty tornado in Texas. But we also had almost 300 snowfall reports. And the latest on this cold air, you can see right here from your AO Arctic Oscillation, that is coming down all the way through November and showing that we could have these two big cold dips coming through the beginning of November before possibly going back on a neutral phase where it'll be back on above average temperatures. It won't be a huge warm up. It just won't be super cold just yet. But we'd have some really cold air coming through maybe two times. But with the update with the Euro, it's also trending. Look at that. Double dip coming through in November before it goes right back up towards a neutral phase as we go out through December. Matter of fact, you can see right here from the update that we are leaving El Nino phase as we go through April. And as we go through May, June, and July, we're going to be leaning towards a neutral phase, a different pattern that's coming. And maybe La Nina will come back next year. But you can see they're all in agreement. Once we go towards January, February, and March, it's going to start going quickly towards a neutral phase. And definitely once we hit May, June, and July, definitely June, July, and August, we will be in a neutral phase. Now, typically in the spring, when you're in a neutral end zone, when you're in a neutral phase, you normally get your subtropical jet coming in. You get a lot of warmer temperatures on the south side of the U.S., and it's wetter along the southeast. While you get these polar jets that still come through the upper Midwest, going out through the northeast. And you can see from the latest update with the Euro that well below average temperatures are coming. Matter of fact, that dark pink right there is getting all the way down to below 20 degrees. There's going to be a big difference. And this is going to shoot all the way down towards South Texas and Mexico, guys. Very cold air coming all the way down by the end of October. Then that second dip is going a little further to the east, towards the southeast of cooler air coming down towards the beginning of November. Still showing all that is true. Then you're going to go a little bit of above average after that. Plus, you can see the latest update. So the hazardous cold that's moving through is all through this blue section from October 29th through November 2nd. Plus, frost or freeze will be advised for everyone that is in this pink section from October 29th all the way through November 2nd, all the way down towards the south and going out through the southeast and the northeast. Still showing is bringing these nasty wind chills on down by the time you go through October 30th. And it's going to keep coming down every morning. This right here is October 31st. Even deeper by the time you go through the beginning of November, November 1st, now you're starting to feel like you're in the 20s in the south. The whole country will be frozen. November 2nd, you're still going to be dealing with this very cold air. I hope y'all did pay attention. And the 3rd, still going to be there, guys. A lot of cold temperatures coming, freezing temperatures. And you can see this transition from National Weather Service, next 6, 10 day temperature probability. Well below average still, while you're getting above average on the west side of the U.S. And once you go from the 8 to 14 days, you see how that above average temperatures start moving in. Thank you so much for all your time. I appreciate every single one of y'all. My heart really goes out to every single one that is in Mexico. Everyone that knows someone that is in Mexico. That is very devastating what happened over there to them. And it was all by surprise. So I wish the best for every single one of y'all. I pray that God fully restores y'all.
Before you go, I want to talk to you real quick on Psalm 147, 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of thy gates. He has blessed thy children within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow, and the waters flow. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy Friday to every single one of y'all. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope the best for every single one of you, you and your families, every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>